Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're uh, getting into something really core to cybersecurity, privileged access management, PM. Mm -hmm. But instead of our usual articles, we're taking a slightly different approach. We're actually going to look at some practice questions from the PAMDE exam. Yeah, this should be interesting. It's like getting straight to the, well, the practical application. You yeah. Know? By digging into these questions, what the answers are and why they're the answer. Exactly. You can pull out some really valuable insights about the fundamentals of PAM. That's the goal. Not just finding the right multiple choice bubble, but really unpacking the concepts behind each question. Think of it as a maybe an accelerated way to grasp these key PAM ideas. Sounds good. Where should we start? Okay, let's dive right in. Question one. Which component is responsible for automatically changing and verifying passwords on managed accounts? And your options are A, Privileged Session Manager, or PSM, B, Password Vault Web Access, PVWA, C, Central Policy Manager, CPM, and D, Vault Server. Okay, so for this one, the answer we're focusing on is C, the Central Policy Manager, the CPM. The CPM. Right. So tell us, what's the main thing we need to wrap our heads around with the CPM? Well, the CPM is essentially the uh, the automation powerhouse for your credentials. It's not just about changing passwords. Okay. It handles the whole life cycle, verifying them, making sure they're changed on schedule based on policy, um, basically keeping those privileged passwords rotated and compliant. So it's doing that heavy lifting automatically, regular rotation, policy enforcement. Exactly. And that automation is critical. It massively shrinks the window an attacker might have the somehow got hold of a password. Yeah. Makes perfect sense, like a dedicated tireless security guard just for passwords. All right, question two. What is the primary function of the PSM Privilege Session Manager? Options. A, to onboard accounts in bulk. Mm -hmm. B, to enable secure isolated access to target systems. C, to replicate vault data. Or D, to generate audit reports. Here, the key function, the primary one is B, enabling that secure isolated access to target systems. Secure and isolated access. Okay, so if the CPM manages the keys, the PSM is sort of how you use them safely. Is that fair? That's a great way to put it, yeah. The PSM acts as a secure gateway. Proxy, really. Users connect through the PSM to get to sensitive systems, but they never actually see or handle the credentials themselves. Oh, okay. Think of it like a very controlled airlock. You can get through... But the keys stay protected on the other side. And that isolation is key, I guess, especially with attacks moving laterally. Absolutely crucial. The PSM isolates the session, often using specific protocols or even containerization, which really helps stop an attacker from jumping from one compromised session to other parts of the network. It contains the blast radius, so to speak. Got it. So it's not just hiding the password. It's building a secure tunnel around the whole interaction. Yeah. Very important. Okay, let's look at question three. Which of the following can be used to define access workflows such as dual control or time-based access? Your choices. A, directory mapping. B, safe permissions. C, access control rules. D, master policies. For defining those kinds of workflows, the answer is D, the master policy. <laughs> master policy. Sounds yeah. foundational, like the main rule book. This is where you set up not just who gets access, but the conditions around it, like how and when. Precisely. The master policy is that central configuration hub for enforcing your organization's specific access rules and workflows. Mm -hmm. It lets you implement things like uh, requiring two people to approve an access request that's your dual control, mm -hmm. or saying, you know, this admin can only access this critical server between 2 and 4 p.m., time-based access. Right, so it governs the process of getting access. Exactly, and the beauty is that it provides that consistent governance layer across mm -hmm. the whole system, across all the different secure containers or safes, making sure everything aligns with your security strategy and often compliance needs too. That makes a lot of sense. One place to set the overarching rules. Okay, moving on. Question four. What method allows users to connect to a target system without revealing the password? Options are... A, manual login with copied credentials. Definitely not that one. B, RDP proxy through PSM. C, vault access through private or client. D, CPM credential injection. We're looking for B again. RDP proxy through PSM. Ah, the PSM again. We just talked about its isolation function. Now it's enabling passwordless connections. How does routing RDP remote desktop protocol through the PSM do that? Right. It connects back to that gateway idea. When you initiate an RDP session through the PSM, yeah. the PSM basically steps in. It fetches the needed credential from the vault, the one managed by the CPM, remember, and it uses that credential to log into the target Windows machine for you. The user gets the RDP session. They can interact with the desktop, but the actual password 
It's never shown to them. They're transmitted to their machine. I see. So the PSM is brokering the whole thing. It handles the secret handshake with the target system using the vaulted password. Exactly. It abstracts the password completely away from the end user. It's a very neat way to provide access without exposing the raw credential. Wow. Reduces risk significantly. Yeah, that sounds really effective. Okay, last question for this set. Question five. In the context of cyber architecture, what is the primary role of PVWA, Password Vault Web Access? Choices. A, to process and encrypt password changes. B, to provide a user-friendly interface for vault interaction. C, to store password history. A, to send system alerts. The main purpose, the primary role here is B, to provide that user-friendly interface for interacting with the vault. Okay, so if the CPM is the engine doing the automatic work and the PSM is the secure gateway for access, yeah. is the PVWA kind of like the dashboard or the control panel? That's a perfect analogy, yes. Yeah. The PVWA is the main web portal. It's where most users and administrators will log in to interact with the PAM system. So what can you do there? Well, through PVWA, you can request access to passwords, retrieve them if you have permission, initiate those secure sessions that then run to the PSM. Uh, you can view recordings of those sessions, manage access requests and approvals, Based on the master policy rules, look at audit logs. Pretty much everything from a user or admin perspective happens via PVWA. So it ties a lot of the other components together from a user experience standpoint. Absolutely. It's designed to be that intuitive, secure window into the whole ecosystem. Maybe take a moment and consider how these principles we pulled from the PMDEF questions reflect those universal challenges and the kind of smart strategies needed to safeguard privileged access, perhaps even in your own organization. Thanks for taking this deep dive with us today.